Um, yes, hello everyone. Um, today we will talk about our journey, uh, about the journey we had when we tried to integrate GitOps in delivery pipelines or in workflow or process-based um, toolings. So my name is Thomas Schütz, I'm a principal engineer for Dynatrace and maintainer of the Captain project and I'm here with Brad McCoy. Yeah. So at first, as we will talk a bit about Captain today, I just wanted to describe what Captain is. So um, Captain is a tool which should help you keeping your deployment stable and keeping your application stable. And it does this by putting um, data or service level objectives in the middle of your process and um, help, um, helps you um, integrating different tools and um, does everything by, uh, um, controls everything uh, in your process. Okay, um, so which are the, what, what would be the goals we would um, want to cover when we, when we are using Captain? At first we wanted to use some kind of release validation. So for instance, I want to deploy something and afterwards try to find out if everything works as I expected. Um, therefore I can use my observability solution just like Prometheus or Dynatrace or whatever. Um, then the second reason why, why you or why I want to use Captain would be that you might have a standard for your observability tooling. So for instance, you define your quality criteria once and can use it um, with whatever observability solution you like to, you like to um, use. And third, uh, third thing is you can use it for vendor neutral tool integrations. So you define your workflow once and by, use, uh, by using cloud events, you only need a consumer for everything and which helps you, which helps you executing everything. Last but not least, we can take auto remediation actions. So based on our observability solution, we can define some kind of events on which we listen. And if something fails, we can take actions based on that. Okay, so um, enough about Captain. So we said that we want to talk about our GitOps journey. And the first thing we, um, we dealt with when we, when we had to deal with GitOps in Captain was that Captain was a very imperative tool. So there was no Git-based configuration and you had to, to do everything via commands. Therefore, we, saw, we, we thought that it would be a good idea to create some kind of a declarative language for, for Captain deployment and build some operators around this. Um, so there were some, th um, I, I don't want to get into deep into this, into this graph, but it, um, it should show how, how hard it was to implement Captain in a, uh, to, to implement GitOps in a, in a, in a imp imperative application. Um, one thing, uh, so we found out some things. So at first I thought this would be GitOps. Um, after some time I spent on GitOps and dealt with some things, I can say, no, this isn't GitOps. Um, uh, this only covered the configuration of Captain, but not the configuration of our deployments. Furthermore, we had to um, deal with our own artifacts. So we had, a, we had an own captain repository where we expected our artifacts. Therefore, we also had to deal with them. The third thing we had for deployment, we had no real desired state. So we had some kind of deployment configuration. We copied something, we modified the configuration, but in fact, this was not real. And last but not least, and this was the hardest part, was we didn't use Argo or Flux we implemented our own Git, GitOps controller and this was hard for everyone who wanted to use it. So, um, I think there is a slide missing. <laughs> so, um, yes, Brad will tell you how the, how the real GitOps implementation looks like. So, here we can see we, we first started implementing Argo CD and Captain. So, we, we used rollouts and flagger as well, but one thing we wanted to make is a solution where you could either bring Argo or Flux. 
So in this scenario, we, the problem that we were seeing is that we, when you were just doing, you know, using GitOps and you were promoting through environments, it, it was hard to do real testing. And specifically, um, so we, we use Prometheus for, metric, uh, for metrics. And when, when we've done a deployment, we want to verify that everything's OK and then use that as a quality gate, which I'll show you soon, to progress to the next environment. So you can see here that um, the, the GitOps controller will see the change, and then that will send a cloud event into Captain. So you can use the Argo notifications controller, or you can also use Flux using a provider an alert, and then we've got a small integration that will turn that into a cloud event and then start the captain sequence. So yeah, you can see here that we're going to run tests, evaluate, and then we create a PR to progress to the next environment as well. And the PR can either be auto-approved, or you can ha ask for approval as well if you want to go to production, for example. So. This is sort of what we started with before we tried to integrate Captain. So everything's in the main branch. We would, the first, I mean, you could change this. It doesn't have to be these environments, but um, it, it's very simply just copying the settings, which has all the application configuration, pretty much the environment variables, and then the version of the container as well. So when it's promoting through environments, it's simply just copying from the folder. So you can see here we have uh, a folder for each environment, and it will simply copy over the, the settings and the version. So for the demo today, we're going to just show a quick demo of there's an app that we like to use called Podtato Head. So with this app, this is done by the app delivery, right? Yeah. And you can change its arms and, and legs, and we like it for, for demos. So yeah, the, the thing that we wanted to add to this was testing, like um, load testing. Um, we can see here that when using Captain, we can have a quality gate between environments. So you can define your SLOs and SLIs to the accepted criteria to progress to the next environment. So for the load testing, we're running K6 load test. And then we're querying the metrics from Prometheus. And then if that passes, then we can do the git promotion to essentially copy the file from the settings file from the load and then copy it into the integration testing. And then Argo or Flux would pick that up. It would not uh, see the change. And then the journey would start again. So it would get the change. And then w it would trigger Captain with a cloud event. And then that workflow would run as well again. So this is what Captain looks like. So you can see here that this is where you define your services. So in this demo, we're using around three services. So we're using the Prometheus service. Um, you can flip that out for Dynatrace, Datadog. There's quite a few other integrations as well. So um, the thing I like about it is, is it's good with interoperability. So you can, Captain's not really opinionated. So it, it's just a declaration saying, OK, I want you to go do um, an evaluation, for example, and then that that service will subscribe to that event. So Captain will send out the event saying, OK, we're on this stage. We're going to um, gonna trigger this event. And then these services that are subscribed to it will then go action that. And, and you can have the event start, uh, started, uh, triggered, started, and finished, and, and failed as well. So this is what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to pretend that we did a, a git change. So I've just done one before that's ready. So we now come here and we want to say, I'm going to start the load testing stage. So 
if someone's done a feature and they put it back into to the main, we're then going to kick off the, the workflow. So this will trigger the sequence, and then that will now roll through the environments. So you can see this automation step. It's going to go right from the feature into production. So it will go through the load testing, integration testing, QA staging. And then the last step will have auto, uh, sorry, it will have manual approve. So it'll make a PR and then we just click approve merge and then that will roll out to prod as well. So this is, um, this is doing the load test now. So it'll actually be using K6 to throw load at it because one thing that we found is when, when we want to query Prometheus, normally it's for four or 500 errors to see if, we're, if it's, our application is working. We found that when there's no traffic, it, it's hard to get a proper outcome of if, if it's actually working. So therefore, we added more API testing. We, we've just integrated trace tests as well. And that can do open telemetry traces and get evaluations from that as well. So yeah, you can see here that this load stage worked. So our K6 load testing was good. We've seen that the traffic went through. It then, you, then it sent an event to use the um, evaluation, which Prometheus was subscribed to it. And then it did the evaluation. And then it said, yes, we're happy with these results. These met our requirements. And then um, it will do the Git promotion as well. So for this Git promotion, it's just auto approve. And then it will go to the next environment. So. You can see that then we went to integration, we did some trace testing, we evaluated that, we promoted it again. So in what it's doing at the moment through each environment, it will just keep doing a PR and then just automatically merging itself as well. So the GitOps tool, every time it notices the change for the environment, it will scoop it up and deploy it and then run the test again. So we're in the last step staging now as well and then now it's uh, finishing, and then that will create a PR to be able to um, merge into production. So you can, and we're cataloging that microservice data as well, because if we have like 30 QA environments, we want to know which, which um, versions, et cetera, are in the environments. So we're finished, and then you can see the PR links here. And then that said, promote to stage production, and it, and it will make the PR for you. Um, we want to do things like reporting as well, so we can report back on all of the testing and things we did. And then a developer or DevOps engineer could come in and just say, OK, this looks good to me. Uh, let's put it into prod. So you can see the files changed. Uh, in this case, it was very simple. So I wanted to change the pod tater heads hat. So at the moment, he has this hat, and that's made it all the way to a PR. And then I can merge that PR. And then now that's sitting in main branch in the production file for the settings. And then in this case, we're using Argo. Um, that will then scoop up that change, deploy it, and then we'll see that his hat will change soon once that syncs. So, it's probably, it might take a minute or two to, to come up. I can maybe just refresh it here. Yeah, so that's syncing now. And then you can see that my change to update his hat has progressed through each environment and we've tested that everything's OK, and it's made its way into prod. So um, some challenges we have at the moment as well is how do we deal with role? Oh, sorry, you have a question? Yes. So Yes, I'll show you now. Yeah, that's a good question. So. Um, 
so these are, yeah, each, so this is using customize. You can do similar things with Helm as well. So for, this is all on main branch, so we're not doing, you know, some people do on branches, but it's not really scalable. Some folks say it's a bad practice to have on branch. So this will all sit in main, and then it will just simply copy the one to two. And then uh, an example, if we go back here to look at the old PRs, we can see that closed, you, you actually see that, see that did the auto approve. So it, it actually just merged itself. So it, it's keeping Git as a source of truth and, and trying to stay true to the GitOps principles. Um, yeah, so that's sort of how we've done it at the moment. And then Thomas now will talk about our findings from this. Things like rollbacks are very difficult, and, and he'll talk a little bit about what uh, Captain looks in the future as well. So, what's, how are we going for time? So, yeah, some of the major challenges that we had with this is that obviously rollbacks are very hard. If something's broken and you know, there can be so many different scenarios. So if you keep rolling back and that fails, wins enough to, to keep going around in a circle. Um, we found it to be quite ping pong, right? Where you, Captain's telling Argo. Uh, thank you. Does this work? Yeah. Um, I think you saw at the graph, of, at the picture of the whole Argo process that we did a lot of ping pong. So we took, we took a look if in the repository if something changed. If something changed, we notified Captain, then Captain did its, did its part, notified Argo, and so on. So this was kind of a ping pong game, so it worked pretty well, mm. but it didn't feel really, really right. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you have things like um, rollouts and flagger as well that, that somewhat do that capability, but we just wanted to go the extra step to have, you know, bring our own tools for whatever we want to use. In context, yeah, sorry, you have a question? Yeah, feel free to just answer as we go. I have a question regarding scalability with GitOps. Like, how many deployments do you, uh, can Argo or this tool support? Can it, like, per hour, like, can do 1,000 deployments, 10,000 deployments? Is that something you've you yeah. tested? Um, I guess we haven't tried it at that scale, have we? Um, this has been pretty small, uh, pretty small scale, but I, I think we would run into some challenges as well because if you have a really big development team and you just want to keep getting features in and then it's going to kick off these workflows as well. So it, if you, one thing with the Git promotion service is that gets quite complex as well because when you start having editing PRs, when you have more than one PR, it, it can get quite complex. Um, but in general, if the question's, is it with just GitOps itself or with GitOps and kept in the way we're doing it? Um, yeah, with Git and GitOps, um, I heard, uh, I think I was at the Flux project meeting the other day and they were talking about someone, I think they showed a Terraform controller using like a thousand deployments at once. So it, it very much can scale. So you can just give it more memory, the, the GitOps tool, and, and it generally goes pretty well. Thank you. Yeah, I've heard of quite a few deployments. I can take the other two. Um, two other things we also found out, um, we need some kind of, co of context information to know in which sequence a uh, uh, service is at the moment. So what you saw in the picture Brad showed, showed it before, or in the, um, in the, on the Captain UI, was that you, um, that there are tasks which are connected between each other and this is propagated via context information. And if you think about GitOps, this might be pretty hard um, to, to get this through a pull request or through a Git repo. So especially for the whole ping pong game we did here for the change detection, kickoff and so on, we had to find a way how to propagate our context information through the GitOps tool. And this was pretty nice for Argo because they had some kind of, um, of information we could pass. Um, in other GitOps tools we had, um, this, was, this was not this easy. Mm -hmm. And this was also a problem we faced in our GSOF project afterwards. Yeah. 
because if it if it's opinionated payload, then it's hard to get the things that we need. So with the Argo notification controller, we can send, we for the application sets, we can put some labels and then it will pass the labels and get that as well. And then for Flux, we did a small integration that will take the payload into our web service and then it will transform it into a cloud event and send it to, to Captain. So we have 10 minutes left. Uh, mm -hmm. Thomas, would you like to talk about the... Yes, so... Um, yes, so um, as you might have noticed, we faced a lot of challenges with, with this workload-based approach and our workflow-based approach and pipelines. And in the last few months, we put our heads together and thought about how such things could be look like in a cloud-native and GitHub server way. Um, so without uh, delivering without pipelines, delivering without, without workflows, and simply rely on GitOps and on all the things we, we all love. And one of the results was that we um, in, uh, created the Captain Lifecycle Controller, which is a small Kubernetes, um, which is a, a, a typical Kubernetes operator. Um, which helps you achieving exactly the things which um, Captain did before or still does. And everything, uh, everything starts with your manifests. Um, one thing we took care about of was that you don't have to change much in your manifest. So you can use the Captain Lifecycle Controller with your default deployment, with your de deployments, with your stateful sets and so on. So you don't have to change your Kubernetes primitives. The only things which are relevant for us are that you have to add some, some annotations, but I think that's obvious in this case. Um, you can use um, Argo for that, you can use Flux for that, you can use your pipeline tool and so on. Um, you see, uh, everything which applies something on the Kubernetes API can be used. And what our lifecycle controller does is it puts observability around all of the things you are doing. So for instance, you see when your, uh, when your deployment started, how long it took and how long it ended uh, and when it ended. And one thing we took care of, because this was also a problem we had with the, with the last approach, is we, tr we are trying to do, or we are not trying it, so we are doing this application aware. So for instance, you can run some kind of pre-deployment tasks and pre-deployment evaluations before the first service of an application gets deployed. So for instance, you can um, check, check if there is enough CPU um, left to deploy your application. And only after these tasks and checks are executed, then the workloads themselves get, get deployed. Um, the second thing we are, we are doing around this is we are using standardized task execution. So you simply have to annotate your deployment and say which task you want to use. Um, behind this, there is a kind of a kind of a definition. This can be enhanced as, as you like, or um, whoever who, who wants to write an, an integration is able to. And um, you can exchange this however you want. At the moment, um, this project is around two or three months old. Um, we are only supporting functions, but this can be. Um, cont containers or CLIs in the future, but this can also be external control planes such as Directive or such as, such as Captain Now, um, where you can send your cloud events to. And a typical workflow of this looks like, looks in a, um, looks like this. So at first we apply our manifests to our Kubernetes control plane. Let's say we are using Flux. Afterwards, um, if there is an app detected, so if the manifest is annotated with an app annotation. We are waiting for an app, uh, an app custom resource and are dealing with our pre and post deployment, uh, pre deployment tasks and, and um, evaluations. After this has been finished, we can do anything on the workload level. So we can check something before the, the pod gets scheduled. Um, can evaluate if this matches our, our requirements. And after everything is finished, we can uh, we simply release the pod. Um, the same for post-deployment. So after we detect that the, that the pod has been deployed, um, we can run some checks, 
some tasks and also evaluate whatever we want. And after we found out that all of the, of the workloads in our um, application are deployed, we can also do uh, post-deployment tasks and um, evaluations based on that. So, um, if you want to get, uh, if you want to find out more about the Captain Lifecycle Controller, um, I'll be at the Captain booth the next three days, um, and I'm really happy to talk with all of you about about all of this. I think it's a pretty cool tool. Um, some things we found out, uh, so to wrap up the session today, we, we think that, that GitOps and Captain um, fit perfectly together in terms of use cases. Um, the initial approach was not this GitOps friendly, um, but I think the next, um, I think the approach with the lifecycle controller will make everything better. Then what we found out was that adopting GitOps in Captain or typical workflow tools might get really hard because at some point in time you are simply pushing something to a Git repository and have to act on it. And you always have to find out when should the tool continue and how can I promote to the next stage. Yes, so with this I hand over to. So yeah, there's a few more talks for Captain today. We, you can come for free as well to the community day. Um, so you can see the schedule here, that's in level three. Um, oh, okay, it might have, yeah. Okay, there it is. Um, yeah, I guess we'll take questions now because we've only got a few minutes, yeah. So does this tool also support like blue-green deployments? No, we, um, we decided not to compete with things as Argo, uh, with Flux or Argo rollouts because we thought that they can do it this better than we. Um, but we can extend them. So everything we're doing in terms of pre-deployment tasks and evaluations and um, evaluations and tasks in, in general can be, can be used from the Captain Lifecycle Controller. But if you want to do progressive delivery and want to do blue-green deployments, canary releases, and so on, um, I think it's the it's the better choice to use the the tools which are already there. Because you can still use an Argo rollout um, CRD with, with that would do that for you as well. So you can do blue-green uh, canary with that. Yes. So you can also use our tasks and evaluations for Argo rollouts of Lego. So that's also no it's also it's no problem. But you have the, um, you get the benefit from that you are more or less tool agnostic. So you can switch between the GitOps tool you, or, uh, you like very easy. And we hope to bring some, some um, standardization into the um, in tooling landscape. Any other question? Yeah. So with this new lifecycle operator controller approach, does it feed back the health information to, to the GitOps tool, like Argo CD, when it says the health and the status of your app? Does that include what Captain knows about or is evaluating? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it too, too good. I still, um, the new lifecycle operator approach. So if you're using it with a CD tool like Argo CD, mm -hmm. Um, and normally Argo CD gives you back the health and the status of your application and, and how it's doing, all, all the components are doing. The, the things that Kepton is supposed to be evaluating and testing, does that reflect back into the health status that you see in Argo CD? Um, at the moment you see how your deployment behaves. So you see that all of your pods came up and that everything is ready. Um, one thing I found out in the last week was that it would be nice to get back some status information from the application itself, and this will be a thing we will, we will be working on. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so it will be at the... Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> if we'll be at the the captain booth, so if you want to come chat to us as well, we'd be more than happy to 